views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Energy Works Radio with Atana Badili. Have you ever wondered what has been gripping your power and light, shutting you off from your potential? Wonder no more. Energy Works Radio with one of the world's leading healers and transformation catalysts, Atana, will help you map out a pathway to create the life you truly desire. Atana brings his ability to see energy patterns to help you become the conductor of your own higher self. Get ready to unhook from those limiting agreements and patterns to create a greater fullness of expression of your soul. Say yes to the creative energy within you and stand in the power of this place to honor your gifts, recognize your skills, and extend outward in the world. Why? For the highest good imaginable. Now here's your amazing host, Atana Badili. Hello, hello. This is Atana. I hope everyone is ready for Christmas. We are all um, prepping up for Christmas. And for me, this is an amazing time of the year where I feel the heart energies so much wider open. Of course, there's a lot more stress because of the material parts of it, of the Christmas part. But it's so beautiful to celebrate Christmas the birth of Christ, and even if you go further back, um, also um, very close to the winter solstice. The winter solstices are so powerful and important, um, also with the um, combined with the uh, summer solstices and the equinoxes, because that's when the sun energy shifts. And it's so interesting when we go deeper in um, in celebrating Christ literally like this, uh, this, uh, the Son of God, right? And it's, it's beautiful when you get into this place where all the hearts are open and people go deeper into celebrating Christmas. And I love the idea of where people go deeper into their hearts, into their heart connection with Christ, you know. Even though I'm not going like to church every, when, every uh, Wednesday, I want to say every Sunday, I create my own one men's at, once, at Wednesday at 1.30 where... Every, Everyone comes and we celebrate the oneness, you know. But every time um, I being asked, you know, are you are you Christian? Are you uh, what about Christ? And you know, my relationship with the divine, with um, all its representatives, really, who came to the planet and to support it, um, our transformation and our healing and our well-being and our oneness and set out reminders like Christ, have a very intimate relationship with with Christ. Not so much like I have to go to church every Sunday and and I have to go there and then I have to connect in that church. My connection is much more intimate where um, Christ is, Jesus Christ is literally my my family. You know, it's not like it's an outsider that I have to go to and say, hey, please, you know, it's like, we are like, we're walking, you know, we are, we are together, you know, when, when Christ, for example, needs me, and I, I work with a lot of different diverse um, cultures um, uh, from all over the world, and I have people coming to me from all walks of life, some atheists, uh, some Buddhists, and, and all over the place, and then also, uh, when I have um, my, my Christian friends coming, they, they come in, and they have this I love the connection and the work that they're doing internally to stay aligned with the Christ and with the Christ consciousness. And and literally with all religions, you know, everyone who wants to be better in whatever they pursue in their lives to get themselves into that enlightened state of open heartedness. But you can't you can really much argue with the idea of an open heart, being in your compassion, being in your love. Um, and being really in that in that bigger, greater reality of understanding what's truly happening, and uh, Christ gives us a lot of these great insights over and over. 
until we really get to this place. And I love the um, the idea of the second chances. That's like nowhere bigger than in Christianity. That's so beautiful. Where even even at the cross, when you saw the thieves and and um, the people that are usually being shunned from society that he gave access with, specifically um, with the uh, with the open arms that he embraced them, and that's that's very beautifully done. And it's very interesting because in the past, and I have um, you know I recall lifetimes where I have been um, persecuted for being Christian, really, you know, and I I can access that that memory literally. And um, and the martyrdoms and all these times that I lived in the past, and to bring culture and um, and uh, spirituality and Christianity all over the world, I can access that actually because I remember that from my past lives as the deep devotion that I had in in these monk stages. And uh, when when you go into the understanding of these second chances, where we're being given um, support regardless where we at at the time. That is a, a very powerful message because we're all getting to these places where we make mistakes. We make mistakes. Sometimes we admit them. Sometimes we don't. They're mistakes regardless. And the moment we get into this place um, of, of really get, getting into mea culpa, it's like, it's, it's like being sorry for what has been done and asking for that forgiveness from oneself within and from the outside – it's a very powerful transformation that takes place because in that moment we are removing all blockages, you know, Remo removing every stagnation that held us back to be part of that overall transformation of that overall healing. And, you know, when I'm being asked, you know, what, uh, what um, religion are you belong to? And, you know, have, you have to look at me. I'm like a multiversal being. I love, I love the Christ consciousness. I love Christ um, you know, it's for me. It's like family and being in this in this place where you have literally like your big brother, you know, uh, your older brother, wise older brother, telling you, you know, hey, this and this, or doesn't even have to tell you anything because he just knows, you know. And one of the most powerful healers coming to the planet. I mean, he did his healing work for a very long time, and um, the most powerful part of that is he taught that to the the people who walked with them. So that's how they made their money. They literally cast out um, uh, entities and uh, and demons and all kinds of uh, parasitic um, uh, beings that were munching on the humans at that time. And that was probably even, there's probably even more going on. So in this, in this time, because of the exposure that we have to the multimedia world, where there's just much more transmitted, you know, and um, that's that's a very powerful. I mean, that's the same wavelength if you really look at it. Because my work is healing work, supporting the healing, the transformation, and I'm I'm also supporting and clearing entities. You know, now I'm I'm don't want to uh, compare myself uh, to uh, to Christ, a Christ consciousness, because I mean he was on a or is on a very um, high level. That's what I'm saying. It's not it's not like I'm considering myself. Um, equal. It's more like I'm looking up to an older, bro older, wise, wiser brother that has truly achieved um, his spiritual breakthrough and his transformation, and uh, and mission. I mean, just observe that mission that uh, he put into place a couple thousand years ago, and now it's uh, literally all over the world. Uh, that's very powerful, and I I appreciate that. I can um, I love it because it it gives uh, us a structure. You know, besides all the abuse that has taken place, you know, and all the side effects of the organized part of church, that's um, and and a lot of good too. It's not just there has been bad things happen, but um, ultimately, I'm I'm not scarred by the church experiences because I kind of stayed away from the organized part, but I have um, I have kept um, Christ um, close to my heart because I know. It's right. I know it's right, and the the message, the mission that he had was very powerful. And not just Christ. There's Mother Mary. There's Mary Magdalene, and there's this whole uh, social, economic structure that's being built around him that gives you an idea how transformation in spiritual enlightenment 
is is happening and what needs to be done. So celebrating this um, around this year is for me a reminder to see the overall structure of compassion and healing. And I love when um, with the respect that's being given uh, to Christ for all his work because he put a lot, a lot of work and love into this planet. And he put this with such, um, I don't want to say force, but with such an intention into this reality that it's still, it's still going. That dynamic is so powerful and it's so divine and so supported by God that it's like still going. It's like these springs that these ancient struck. You know, they struck a stone and then a spring comes out. And all the sacred places that are that are happening that are on the planet, you do want to go and visit them and connect with that power of your source. You know, so I want to wish everyone um, this um, this Christmas a heart opening, a heart awakening, a heart clearing, and most importantly. A happy, relaxed time, and when you when you have these uh, moments where you rest, think about yourself, think about the world, think about the mission that Christ had, because the power that he brought in of healing, of love, and unconditional love is so unconventional. Very few actually followed that example to the full extent. It's nice to be somewhat sometimes compassionate, but having that all the time, um, that means you have to shift your paradigm. That means if you want to go deeper into the Christ awareness, into the Christ consciousness, that means you have to shift your individual behavior towards life, yourself, and others. That means we have to apply ourselves in a much more open way and not just for a couple of days or weeks, but actually integrating that. Otherwise, we let Jesus do the work and then we kind of like saying, hey, we, we had like a couple of times of the year where we were really loving and compassionate and that should be. And I'm not saying it's not going to add up to nothing, but it's nice to evolve in your spirituality because a lot of people come to me and they believe in different faiths. But, you know, when you really truly believe in what you're believing to the full extent, in that case, if it's the Christ consciousness, if it's Jesus Christ, if it's God, if it's the goddess, or if it's the enlightenment consciousness, how much do you really trust it? How much are you putting yourself really out there and say, I'm now ready to surrender my individual egotistical thoughts of failure of helplessness, of hopelessness towards the divine so that the divine truly can support me. And if you truly believe in Christ, and that's why I'm that's why I'm saying if you really believe in Christ, then have that faith in Christ that when you make that step outside of your box that you're being taken care of by Christ. Otherwise it's like, yeah, one day, one day I'm going to, one day I'm that's gonna happen. But that's the moment when you create your own intimate relationship with God, with Christ, with the enlightenment consciousness, because you're truly stepping out of the box. And if you really look at what Jesus did, even at the temple, he really stepped out of the box. The box was the temple. And he said, you know what, I'm going to change this. I'm going to I'm gonna bring the clear message back out. I'm going to the roots of the clear message, and that's what I'm going to promote. And if you if you look at it, it was pretty radical. It's not like it's not, um, yeah, let's see, and we all sit here and everything will be fine. He pretty much put a statement out there that um, that really made, uh, un- unfolded this whole process of his crucifixions. Because if he wouldn't uh, mess with the status quo at that time, the status quo would not be bothered, right? The status quo, as society was at that time, that was running all kinds of differently. It was running in terms of... Um, the structure that's already there, the finance part that was already in, in place. And if you if you look at now these times, the status quo is now becoming Christianity. So it's very interesting because if you look at it now, Christianity becomes status quo. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But at the same time, status quo means also stagnation. There's a lot of stagnation that's happening. 
besides and behind uh, people who think they are really following the, the teaching because on their level, their spirituality level, they maybe have like two days a week that they can dedicate to it. Now, if you, if you look at my life, I dedicate my whole life to my spirituality every day, 24-7. You know, I may have my off times four or five hours a week or 10 hours or 20 hours, you know, but that's about it. It's not like I'm putting 20 hours in. So as an energy healer, when you start working, you get more and more into a place where you want to be aligned with your core purpose. How more you're aligned with your purpose, how more you become your um, – your service and how, how more you become your enlightenment. And that doesn't mean that you're just going to be um, walking on water, but it means that you have clear insights, clear understandings of the stagnations that are coming up in your system. And we can improve wherever we at. It doesn't matter if we are Christian, a Buddhist, a Muslim. It doesn't matter if we are Hindu. It doesn't matter what faith be, we are actually belong to. We can improve wherever we at. <laughs> And my energy work uh, philosophy is like uh, improvement. Improve yourself, improve your health, improve your well-being, improve your mentality so that you can be the best person that you can be. If you look at that in, in detail, you can go a little bit further into what needs to happen in terms of your self-advancement, what needs to happen in order to get yourself um, into higher levels of transformation. But we're going to go into a break right now and we'll be back shortly. Thank you so much. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit jenroyster.com for more information. Are you sick of feeling overworked with no motivation? Take a break from the daily grind. Life coach Nicole Eisler is here to provide a healing journey of optimism. Passionate and caring, Nicole is no ordinary soul. Her dedication to helping everyone has no limit. Witness the power of positivity. Tune in every first and third Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific for Positivity Party Radio with Nicole Eisler on Transformation. Information Talk Radio. For more information, visit BigDreamAwakening.com. Would you like to experience life transforming adventures in personal expansion and world service? If you do, tune in to learn about magical innate abilities that you can develop and use to make your dreams come true. Joy Elaine is author of The Joy Chronicles. And she's inviting you and millions of others to join her in working with galactic masters, angels, and the Ashtar Command as they assist humanity and planet Earth to achieve their ultimate destination of ascension. For more information about this upcoming event and broadcast, visit joyelaine.com. That's joy. E-L-A-I-N-E dot com. You, yes, you can be the highest version of yourself. Wellness coach and natural beauty expert, Dr. Agnes Renkel is on a mission to help you play the game of your life. Win in vibrancy, health and beauty because you deserve it. Dr. Agnes goes beyond the limits in her personal coaching sessions to revolutionize health and wellness. Now is the time to unleash your true power. For more information, visit dragnesfrankel.com. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Pat. I am so thrilled. I've had the honor of working with Leslie Fontaine for the past year or so. And what she has created in her hit program, Sheer Alchemy, transcends what most of us get to listen to or hear in any point in time in our lives. But beyond that, Leslie is working with people all over the world, and she has created something phenomenal based on the feedback and input 
from the archangels, from the ascended masters, from the light beings, and most importantly, from each and every one of you. So if you want to change your life, if you're ready to step into your own version of sheer alchemy, please give Leslie a call at 678-665-3366. And why? Because this is what you're going to be prepared to do. Be amazed and on your part, connect with the Ascended Masters that are there to help you custom make the life that you are meant to live. Hello, hello, and we are back. We are back with Energy Works Radio. I'm glad to have you here with me, there, with me. I'm with you. It's so amazing how technology makes so many things possible. And I wanted to wish you all a Merry Christmas and I wish you healing, happiness of the heart, well being, prosperity, and for you moving forward to your next step in your transformation. I'm so happy that more and more people wake up into their healing consciousness into wanting to serve humanity, into actually supporting other people and humanity step into their power. That's such a noble work. I love when a person comes to me and they say, and that person says, I want to learn energy work and I want to do this as my profession. And there's, a, there's a different types of people that come uh, to energy work. You know, A lot of people come because they say, well, I just want to change my profession and I had this epiphany. What's very powerful because when you have these epiphanies and literally uh, your higher self, God, calls you to this mission and you're, being going to, you're going to serve humanity and other people in healing and self-healing and well-being, that's a big calling. And when that happens, of course you want to do it as fast as possible. A lot of the people who come to me think just energy work is going to happen overnight. Um, energy work is literally like any profession. Um, when we are doing spiritual work, that doesn't mean spiritual is going to happen just right away. Because often we don't see spiritual work or spirituality made visible much except in religion. But our spirituality and in the, in the olden days in China or Japan or even in Europe, even when you wanted to learn a profession, you basically went to apprentice somewhere. You went to serve a person that actually knew about it. And that's how all the, the great artists had their workshops where they had like hundreds of people doing different miscellaneous tasks that are required to get the overall painting or picture um, that, or, or mosaics, pictures that, that need to be put into the ground or onto the walls. There had to be a lot of groundwork being done, and that was a lot being often done by the apprentice. Now, even if you look at the Kung Fu masters, they, they had their apprentices, and that took a very long time until they mastered something. Now, nowadays, people come and say, well, I want to do energy work. And they come in and they think it's just going to happen just with one workshop. And I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but the, the work that you would have to do by yourself would be very um, dedicated work that you would have to do 24-7. If you work with somebody who already is doing it, it's different. Um, you, you just learn faster. It's similar like with the Sufis. Um, um, people say when you stay with the Sufis uh, for um, a week, it's like you, was, uh, you, you really learned for a year worth of uh, spiritual work because just of the emotional and the energetic intelligence. Now, uh, being with a Sufi for a year, it's like you did your spiritual work for 10 years. And you can, um, you can imagine that's where they really um, understood that uh, principle of support. So the, the dedication that's required to go deeper into energy work is not even serving another person or master or so. It's more like 
you want to do the best that you can do. And if you just do it on yourself, you have to be very, very dedicated to say, I'm going to do instead of one hour of energy work, I'm going to do two hours of energy work. And with a person, um, you know, like myself, for example, I can tell if you do your energy work daily or if you kind of slip a couple days. I can tell if you do your mantras daily or if you skip a day. These are all exercises required so you get your perseverance, so you can get your your breakthrough force built up. These are all resistance training uh, aspects, similar like in uh, in weight workout or in condition uh, in in speed conditioning, where you run uphill instead of just downhill, and where you where you learn in different ways and forms how to apply the energy work. How long are you going to be around me or working with me? Um, how long are you going to or how faster and deeper and more comprehensively you're going to integrate energy work? Why? Because this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing all day long. So it's nice to learn in a way from like a, a hobby teacher, but it's different if you learn from somebody that dedicates the whole life to it, where I'm not dissing any, anybody doing energy healing work or on any level because you do it the way that you dedicate the time for it, and that's fine. You know, you, you want to see um, how much dedication is that person put into their lives for their healing work. And, you know, we are all, we're all improving on a daily basis. That means we're getting better. Um, you know, uh, I'd say getting getting better in in terms of of flowing better, understanding the bigger picture better, seeing what needs to be improved, and ultimately you want to be at the cutting edge of energy work. You want to you want to know what's happening right now on the energy front. Where where is our focus need to be in order to support the the people coming to us? And it's different if you just want to change your profession because you want to. Uh, just do this for you know for some time and you enjoy energy work or if you want to do this truly dedicated for the rest of your life or you maybe just want to try it you know a lot of people come to me and they they are in they are staying in their professions they are in the media world actors actresses singers you know songwriters or even from all walks of life i mean even from even a a person that has nothing to do with uh, being exposed to many people. They are working more with the earth. Even that is is powerful healing because you're doing earth healing. There's so many uh, ways of how you can apply energy work. I still have, there's so many ways literally that you can apply energy work on everything. So that's why I highly recommend to do energy work. The moment you get up, do energy work because that translates already the intention and the energy into your day, into the action that effortlessly will attract what you need it. I'm not saying conflictless, but effortless, because you may still going to have to go to life. Just doing energy work doesn't mean you can you can skip life, but it means that you can attract the effortlessness, the higher levels of consciousness that support you to get through the day, to the week, to the month, to the year, through your life in excellence. Because there's levels we would limit ourselves if we would not connect with the higher levels. And, you know, it's great to have religion too and your prayers, but that's not the same as energy work. It's also good to do your meditation and your yoga, but it's not the same as energy work. It's good to do your mantras. But it's not the same as energy work. Energy work has its own way of of being or its own right to be there. It's not like you say, well, I worked out today, so I don't need to do anything else anymore. It's the same thing. It's not like when you do energy work, you don't do, need to do anything else. It means you are adding the missing link. The missing link in our daily lives is literally energy work. Energy work in our daily lives gives us the re remembering or the memory that we are energy beings. 
once you remember you're an energy being, you will start to interact with the energy world in a much more conscious way. And that's very important. That's different than just being on a spiritual level. The energy level is a whole nother dimension that has to be recognized, that has to be seen, and that has to be appreciated. So it's not like, oh, this is like an, a religion. No, it's not. It's our very own, our very own part of life. So it's our very, very intimate interaction with this universe, with God, with the divine, with our enlightenment. And if we are not showing up there, then God, the divine, the enlightenment is missing us because it says, why are you not there energetically? And that cannot be done with just saying a prayer and the prayer kind of fills, fills it in. That, that's not happening. You cannot just do yoga for it. It might fill fill in 10% or 5% and maybe your spirituality 5%. And maybe your workout, you get like a spiritual kick from your workout because you broke through and you ran instead of 5 miles, 10 miles. But at the same time, there's an energy awareness and an energy dimension. That energy dimension needs to be embraced. It needs to be recognized and it needs to be, we need to be starting playing in that field. And once we get into our energy work on our daily energy work, you know, I'm probably going to add this to my, to my prayer or oh, oh Lord, please give me my daily energy work today, you know, so that I have, that I truly have that um, consciousness to create time and space for myself. Because when you create space for your yoga practice or your workout, your sport, when you create your time and space for well-beingness, for your, um, your energy work and for your rest, these are already hours out of your day that you're actually dedicating towards self-healing or well-being. Now, a lot of people say, who the heck has time like any time to do that? Because I'm busy all day long. Here's the kicker. You haven't given you the permission to have time. You don't have a good time management if you say that to me. Because ultimately, we're creating our reality. Now, look at all the people who go to the self-healing gurus, how they go to Hicks or Robbins. Or, or it's, they're all saying the same thing. You're creating your own reality. And a lot of people um, even think that's far out. But ultimately, think about this. The way how you apply yourself towards your daily life is the way how you saw your parents or society being around you. So not having enough time and space is a belief system. And that belief system manifested because there's millions and billions on, of people are, are on this planet and some are not rushed. Some are not rushed and for some reason they can create and, um, and space their time out into their day, into their weeks as they wish. So can you. So every time and I'm not judging that either. It's fine. If you don't have the time, then don't have the time. But ultimately, think about this. If you create time for your energy work, just consider this. You wake up. You do the mantras. You just do my prosperity mantras every day. Pick a time in the day, maybe in the morning, maybe in the evenings, maybe even while you drive to work, maybe while you come back from work. Create time and space where you actually do the mantras. Now, ideally, you want to create that time and space when you wake up. Then you wake up, you do your mantras first. Then you do your energy work right after that. You can do your energy work first and then the mantras. That's fine too. And just consider this. The, the mantras is 11 minutes and 11 seconds. The energy work can be 15 minutes to an hour. So that's almost two hours that, you, um, that you're dedicating um, towards your well-beingness. So how more time you dedicate for your well-being, how more God in the universe will dedicate 
uh, will send towards you to have so you can dedicate more because obviously you're signalizing out to the universe, this is what I love. This is what I want more of. So, of course, then God in the universe says, well, if that's what he or she wants, then let's give her more of it because she loves it and we love to serve her or him. That's what you have to consider. Then you offer yourself a workout, that sport. You're working out. You're, um, you're dedicating rest. You're dedicating workout, sport for, let's say, another hour. Then you have your mantra, 11 minutes. Then you have energy work, an hour. Now you're going into almost over two hours, right? And now, can you imagine, con compare that with the rest of 45 minutes, now you have three hours a day free that you can dedicate towards these aspects. It's not really they're empty because you fill them with uh, the mantras, energy work, workout, rest. Now this is, this is self literally self-care. Once you start doing that, the universe will start providing. God and the universe will start providing for you so that you can have this time. So something mysteriously is going to happen. Very, very mysteriously is going to happen and very um, interesting. Because when you dedicate so much time, then God and the universe will create by the way, a possibility how you can maintain that. So now you have three hours that you can dedicate to your well-being and God and the universe will start creating opportunities for you how you can have either the same income with less work, you know, and this, what I just mentioned, shouldn't be called work for you. Working out is not really work. It's just, it should be like, um, like drinking water or going to the bathroom, a normal thing, then doing the mantras should be not like this is work. No, it's like going to the bathroom or drinking water or eating. And energy work should be not any be different than going to the bathroom or eating or sleeping because that's part of our well-being. It's part of our makeup, really. And that's the intensity of how we need to integrate that. And we haven't been taught that way because we brought being, we got being brought up by just do this or that, anything outside of you. We weren't really being taught to look at the inside of our well-being. We didn't really, very few of us have been, have been taught yoga from the get-go or being taught to do energy work or do prayers um, on a daily basis, you know. And, you know, I don't want to leave the prayers out here either. So if you add the prayers, energy work, and then you do the mantras, and then you work out, and then you get some rest. So consider this like four or five hours. And if you see this as work, then there is already a problem with your assessment of reality. Because that shouldn't be any work to you. This is like, this is like, this is where you, where your soul recharges. That's where you recharge your system. That is really fully functioning and not being constantly under this pressure of, um, I don't know if I can make it throughout the, through this day. It should be, I'm doing my energy work, I'm doing my mantra, I'm working out, and I'm doing my prayer, and my day is going to be fantastic. And then you can really say, my day is going to be fantastic, you know. All right, well, we're going to go into a break and we're going to come back shortly and go a little bit deeper into energy work and the role of energy work into our daily lives. Thank you. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in to Mainstream Metaphysics Radio to harness your connection with the universe to effect change for optimal success and happiness. Name one of the country's top psychics. Eve now brings her insights and gifts to this weekly hit call-in show. 
joined by visionaries, leaders, and gifted others, but mostly you. Jot it down, Thursdays, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in to Dynamics of Diversity Radio, scripting the new narrative for immigration with leading experts, Kripa Upadhyay and Steve Tanijo on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This show will remove the noise that often accompanies discussions on this topic and share a new perspective on the dynamics of immigration and diversity, ever reminding us that together we are all at the core of innovation, excellence, and positive change. Visit OrbitLawPLLC.com for upcoming topics. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. When your body is awakened, your spirit comes alive. Dana Canetto is a transformational guide, embodiment coach, and spiritual mentor assisting women in realigning with their truth and embodying who they are by connecting to the wisdom of their body. Tune in every month on Transformation Talk Radio and the Dr. Pat Show Network for Body Divinity Radio with Dana Canetto. For more information on Dana and her services, visit danacanetto.com. That's D-A-N-A-C-A-N-N-E-T-O.com. Hello, hello. We are back with Energy Works Radio. I'm your host, Atana. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm so happy to have you here just before Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. I wish you and, of course, a Happy New Year. Now we are going uh, to go into the year of the rooster, the Chinese New Year of the rooster. So that's where we're all going to be waking up earlier, I guess, and we're going to have been... Uh, probably more opportunities and going to have more opportunities to get um, uh, picking away from what we need to be doing and moving forward on our career path and, you know, of course, deeper into our purpose. So anytime, anytime we think about creating time and space um, for us in this new year, in this time, in this moment, consider what time, what do you need the time for? Every time I um, I create space for myself, I create an opening for energy work, for my mantras to chant, and even prayers. And um, often I need to integrate working out. I don't. I, I cannot even tell you how important it is to work out to keep your sanity in in this uh, super intense times. Clearing your energy system with working out, super important. Energy work, super important. Uh, mantras. I want you to get my mantras when you have time. Go on my website, atanamethod.com. Get, get my mantras, uh, the, uh, the prosperity healing mantras, and, um, or on iTunes. You can look, uh, look them up. And get the mantras. Start pick a mantra and start doing them for 40 days, and then pick the next one for another 40 days, and so on. And you see, you're going to see what's happening in your life. Transformation, prosperity, healing. This is all really connected. I realized this over over my years that I'm working with people. Prosperity, consciousness, and healing, and well-being, and success. This is all connected, even related to relationships. Lack consciousness, the opposite of prosperity consciousness, lack consciousness manifests itself in many different ways and forms. 
The opposite of that is prosperity consciousness. Having more than enough energy is very important to get yourself going throughout the day, throughout your life, so that you have the foundation, so that you have your your energy dynamic to move forward in your day. And um, of course, working out, uh, meditating, that's all important. Even, you know, doing your yoga practice and prayer practice. But you need to include the body. You need to include the body. You need to also include the energy. You need to include your sound, your voice. And your voice uh, with, um, with these mantras, for example, they will get you out of your shell where when you have problems even expressing yourself with a sound or you think, oh, my, my voice doesn't really sound that good. Guess what? You start chanting and you're going to tap right into your light expression. Once you get there and you start expressing yourself from the core being, from this core deep part of your being, and you're listening to yourself, then you can start hearing your being. And how more you hear your being, how more you're expressing it, you, how more it's going to be supported. Very simple. I um, urge you if you want to go deeper into energy work and you want to be... Uh, the energy healer that you um, that you dreamed of or that you feel is in you and you need support to unchisel um, this sculpture of your energy work being, I'll be glad to help you with that. I'm, I'm very happy that you decide that. So my, uh, my advice here is look up Atana Method, my website, A-T-A-A-N-A, and then method.com, atanamethod.com. You can find also my Energy Works song um, that um, that's being recorded there, the mantras, and also the upcoming Energy Healer updates for 2017 that should be out there by the end of this month for the whole year, where you can pick a date for the Energy Level uh, Class 1, where you can do energy work on yourself and on others, but you, um, you're going to look into that, and it's not like any other energy work. You actually sense the energy flowing, and it's, it's a very balanced way of doing energy work um, on yourself and on others. It connects you to all dimensions, and it works on all dimensions. So you can have an access to this, uh, the crystal kingdom, to um, the nature divas, and... Um, also to the earth grid at the same time as you go in deeper into your spiritual healing. Please find me, look up the uh, the one mens that I have on Wednesdays. That's 1.30 every Wednesday. I have also one mens recorded from the past. Some of them are so powerful. Um, I could replay them today and they would work fantastically. Um, Now, that being said, I want you to go a little bit deeper today into your, um, into your being and ask yourself this question. What is it? What is it that I truly want to do? What is it that I truly want to do in 2017? What is it that I truly want to do in 2017 in terms of my purpose, in terms of my self-healing, in terms of my service to others? What is it that I want to do? And if that's in any form related to energy work, or even if that's related to be the best that I can be in my life, in my life for my family, for myself, for my children, for um for my relatives or for fellow humans, then, and you want to go deeper into energy work, please contact me. We want to, I want to make sure that you're being fully supported and that you can get the, the access to the consciousness that's required for you to get onto your journey and start this transformation. So with that being said, I would like you to look into Pick a mantra from my mantra CD and start it for 40 days. I'm going to share also some information um, about self-healing um, today. That is, that is very critical to 
um, the information that I'm putting out there in, in terms of energy wholeness, in energy completion. I would like you to concentrate for now, for just a moment on your breath. Just inhale and exhale uh, deeply. As you're inhaling and exhaling deeply, and you're breathing very, very calm in a relaxed way, I would like you to call all of your power back to yourself. Any energy that you gave away to any dysfunctional thoughts or judgments or any traffic stress, any energy, any power that you gave away to stress in any form, I would like you now to call your power back to yourself. How? Just state the intention. I now call my power back. Say, say it like, uh, repeat after me. I call all of my power back. I am whole and complete. I call all of my power back. I am whole and complete. I call all of my power back. I am whole and complete. I call all of my power back. I am whole and complete. As you're saying this internally or even out loud, you're giving your power permission to return to you, to come back to you from past lives, from parallel lives, from future lives, from any traumatic situations where your energy was still stuck. You're calling your power back and allowing that power to return to you so that it can now be fueling your energy system, your organs, your whole system. As you're doing that on a daily basis, you will get stronger and stronger and more conscious because your energy is with you. When your energy is with you, you don't feel depleted, you don't feel deficient, you don't feel unconscious. When your power is with you, you have access to all of existence. When you are intact, you are intact in the right tact, you are in harmony with the multiverse. Intactness is very important for us to even get deeper into your, into our awareness of life. And that consciousness is required if we want to move forward into our excellence. Our excellence is required if we want to go into our enlightenment. So these are very crucial steps for us on a daily basis, literally, to go there. One more time, just breathe deeply. And as you're breathing deeply, you give your power permission to return to you by just simply stating, I call all of my power back to me. I am whole and complete. I call all of my power back to me. I am whole and complete. Call your power back from the past traumatic experiences where your energy was still stuck. Any traumatic experience, even if it was yesterday or any stress situations where you just totally got um, ungrounded for a moment. Call your power back, come back into your excellence and be the powerful being that you are, the grounded, activated, heart-centered being that you are. One more time, I call all of my power back to me, I am whole and complete. One more time, I call all of my power back to me, I am whole and and complete. Now breathe deeply, give yourself a moment while you align yourself with this time of the year. Call your power back to yourself. Any fear, any anxiety, any depression that sidetracked your power, call your power back from there. Allow that power to be with you. And let's say it one more time. I call all of my power back to me. I am whole and complete. Now say it with me. I call all of my power back to me. I'm whole and complete. One more time with intent. 
I call all of my power back to me. I am whole and complete. One more time. I call all of my power back to me. I am whole and complete. Observe the energy returning. Observe the energy coming back. If you want to know more about how to apply it, I'm putting a booklet out there about how to call our power back and from what situations. And then also bringing out two books. One is the Atana method and um, the other one is the Sacred Dialogue. And we're talking soon. Thank you for everyone tuning in. We love you. Bye. Thank you for listening to Energy Works Radio with Atana Badili. Each show, Atana provides listeners with live energy healing meditations and tools to shed the layers of limitation and reveal the powerful life force within that can conceive, achieve, and activate you for an amazing life. For more information and to book a session with Atana, please visit AtanaMethod.com. That's AtanaMethod.com. And tune in next time for Energy Works Radio with Atana.